Good morning. Good morning. We don't often quote from the book of Zephaniah. You know, there are some of those books in the Bible that there's a lot of valuable information in there, and we kind of skip over them because they're not the big highlighted books. But in chapter 3, which also I found out today is one of Kathy's favorite chapters, there is a section titled, A Happy Song, in the Bible. You know, they put the little titles above the paragraphs. We are told, sing Jerusalem, shout for joy. Be happy and rejoice with all your heart. Now, the song we're going to do at the beginning is very familiar, all of them. It's kind of a medley. It is a medley. If you can't smile during this one, um, I would say I'm worried about you, but I don't want to insult anybody. This is, this is kind of fun. So let's stand, start the service by singing with joy to the Lord this morning. Come on, get up, get up, get up.
the one who saves us. To him be glory, greatness, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for all time, past, now, and forever. Amen.
snow? Yeah. Anybody build a snowman? My snowman is It's melted. It melted fast yesterday, didn't it? Although it made our lives a little bit more complicated this week, it was beautiful, wasn't it? That snow? Really nice. Sometimes I look at you, boys and girls, and I think, how much you've grown since last year, maybe even since last week. <coughs> this morning we're going to talk a little bit first about some of the things it takes to grow, to be strong, healthy adults, for anybody to live and survive in the world. Can you think of what we really need to grow? What do we need? I'll let you talk about this in school. What's something that we need to grow to grow up to be strong and healthy? Everybody needs this. We know we needed vegetables, good vegetables, and food. That's right. Can you think of something else? Shaking fruit? Now all kinds of good, healthy food. That's one thing we need. Can anybody think of anything else besides food that we need? We have. That's important. That's true. What are some of those things we just can't live without? Yes. Be social. Be social. Well, that's an important part, too. Yes, that's right. Our family and our friends, that's a really important part of it. Can you think of anything? We've got food. We've got love <coughs> from our family and friends. What else do we need? And that's true. Can you think of something else? We have food. Wow, well, we're getting to that. Yeah, you're, you're ahead of the game. <laughs> you're ahead of the game. Uh, we'll save that one for a minute. Uh, what about a nice warm place to be? Yeah, that's right. You're exactly right. <laughs> you're ahead of the game. That's where we're going at, Andrew. <laughs> uh, we need a home, don't we? Shelter. Food. We need a family to love us. We need good, warm clothing. That's right, when it's cold outside. And Andrew's exactly right. Because sometimes people think they have it all when they have good food and shelter and clothing and love from their family. But Andrew knows that there's something else sometimes that we need, and that is Jesus in our lives. That's right, in our lives we need Jesus and God. You're exactly right. Jesus gives us direction for our lives, and he teaches us how to, that's right, together. Jesus is God's son that came on earth and helped us learn how to live our lives and how to treat other people and how to love other people. What did you say? Three in one, that's right. All right, let's go ahead. God gives us hope. And uh, sometimes it can be a scary world that we live in. But God, through his son Jesus, gives us a promise of eternal life. Now, when God gives us this special love and this hope through his son Jesus Christ, we want to share it with other people so that they can have Jesus in their lives and grow to be strong and healthy too. How can you show somebody that you care about them? Can you think of some ways that you can show someone? How do you show somebody that you care about them? Yes. Give them a hug? That's right. Good, good one, yes. Say nice things about them? That's always important. Makes them feel good, doesn't it? That's great. Anybody else have any ideas? Of what, how you can show somebody that you care about them? Second. Yes. <coughs> Give them gifts sometimes. Yes. <coughs> Help them out. There's a good one. Treats. Treats. Treats are always great, aren't they? They're all great ideas. I've got a little list myself about ten things that I thought of that might show someone that you care about them. You can listen to what they have to say. Sometimes just being a good listener. Say thank you when they do something nice for you. And forgive them when they do something to you that hurts you. <clears throat> you can put their needs ahead of yours. You can write them a kind note, or you can give them a gift for no reason at all. If somebody's feeling really down, you could offer encouragement to them. You could volunteer to help them. 
with something that's kind of hard for them. Or you could invite them to do something special with you. You could share your snack with them. There are many ways to show someone that you care about them. Now, the best way is by doing nice things for them each and every day. When someone is sick, a visit from a friend might do them more good than medicine. And when someone is sad or having a bad day, a smile or just hello can make them feel better. Have you ever seen someone sitting all alone at school who doesn't have anybody to play with? Have you ever seen that? Yes. Yeah, well, if you sat down and talked to them, it just might make them feel as if someone cares about them. Sometimes a simple act of kindness can mean a lot more than a gift. Jesus was always kind and helpful to the people he met. One day, he was at the home of Simon Peter. And Peter's mother-in-law was very sick in bed with a fever. Jesus went into the room where she was and took her by the hand and helped her on her bed. And when Jesus touched her, the fever went away immediately. And later that evening, people brought everyone who was sick and those who were uh, demon possessed so that Jesus could heal them. The next time that you want someone to know how much you care for them, remember to show others we care, not just by giving them gifts, but by showing acts of kindness like Jesus did. In that way, we can share his love with other people. Can we bow our heads and pray? Dear Father, Jesus taught us how to love one another. Help us to follow his example and show our love by acts of kindness toward others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare for prayer, I'm going to invite the choir to come on up. They're going to sing for us at the end of our prayer time. As we prepare this morning to pray, um, be open to what God speaks to you during our prayer time because there are other things, other people, other issues that you may not know about that need you to just breathe a prayer for. So I ask you now, lift up your hearts. Gracious and holy God, we are enjoying this break from the bitter cold and uh, snowstorms, and we thank you for that, for our safety during that time. We often take things for granted, like running water and electricity and heat, it was apparent that there were many people who suffered during that time without those luxuries. Sometimes they're not even common to everyone. We're grateful to be here today, to bow before you and to lift to you our cries, our concerns, our worries for those who surround us, for our loved ones, who are nearby or far away. And that we are also excited that you are awakening in us a desire to serve and to, uh, to know you. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to work in our hearts and our lives and our minds, that we may be the ones who people see pointing to Christ, and that as we point the way, they will find answers for their hurts and comfort for their ills. That in those moments when family, family members and material goods are lost, that that will not be the only place they have placed their hope. Lord, as we sang this morning, our hope is built on Christ. And we ask that you would ensure within our hearts and within the hearts of those that we connect with that Christ is our foundation now and forever. Lord, bless us this morning as we lift up to you our hearts, our cries for others, and our love for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
was not a good night to be out. And so we did not rehearse Wednesday night, but they did a great job of rehearsing this morning. And um, Ben, I want to thank you for leading us. It just helps us, I think, be able to focus and to know that you know what you're doing, and we trust you, even when rehearsal is canceled. So, thank you. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take out your Bibles this morning. We're going to do just a, a little quick look backwards, and then we'll start with the passage that's on the screen in just a moment. Last week, we looked at uh, Mark, beginning at in the first chapter at verse uh, 21, and we talked about that demon-possessed man who was in the temple. Um, this was part of Jesus journeying through the countryside, preaching, um, but really focused on two things. Anybody remember what those two things were? We just talked about one of them, healing people. Now that means healing physical ailments as well as healing of the soul and the spirit. Uh, but that was one of his goals. The other goal was to defeat Satan, get his message out, and to, to really begin that mission, that ministry among people of uh, being certain uh, that God knew that the war was going to be won by him. So, in that passage, you see Jesus has already called his disciples to follow him, and then when he meets the man in the synagogue with the demon, what does he tell the demon? What does your scripture say? Be quiet and come out. In other words, be gone. He's calling that demon out of that man and getting him out of the picture. And that, for me, paints the picture of what Christ does, not only in our individual lives, but for all of humanity. Calls out of us that evil, that bad, that um, wayward being, that part of our soul has really no right to have a home within us and gets it away from us so that we can be healed, be whole. It's a wonderful picture, word picture for me to say, Jesus is calling us and he's casting out or saying, be gone. You come to me and you go away. That's that picture of rebirth in Christ that we claim as Christians, that we encounter when we are baptized. So let's begin reading then at verse 29. Um, this is after that particular scenario uh, passes. And my scripture begins with, as soon as. Does yours say that? As soon as. So Jesus has been to the synagogue. It's Sunday morning, and I know, here we go, it's the preachers, the only day of the week they work. It's the one hour that we work. And most of us preachers on Sunday afternoon aren't worth a whole lot because we're exhausted. And uh, we want to go home and relax. But that's not what happened with Jesus. So let's read. As soon as they left the synagogue. They went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, 
And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. We say, thanks be to God. Well, let me review that for you, that day of Jesus. He went to the synagogue as a visiting teacher, and they asked him to preach, which was common for the day. And they left there, as soon as they left there, they went to Simon Peter's house, huh? assuming that they were thinking there would be Sunday dinner waiting for them, right? You're all set for Sunday dinner coming up here pretty soon, right? We look forward to that. And, and they walk in the house and somebody says, oh Jesus, you need to come here because Mama is sick. She's not doing well. So Jesus healed her and the, the immediate response of being healed was what? She got up and served. It's interesting language. I don't know what translations you've read. Some use specifically that language. She served them. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that she was the waitress that brought the tray like this, but it means that she recognized the healing that Christ brought to her life, and her response was service, adoration. Let me do what I can for you. Let me respond with my life invested in service to you. After that, um, I don't read anything about a nap there, do you? I didn't say anything about a nap. But later that day, the whole town, it says, gathered. And they brought money and treasures, hammocks and pillows. What did they bring? Their pain, their brokenness, their sickness their inability to be well. They brought all of their ailments to Christ to be healed. They brought their families. They brought their friends. They probably went down to the synagogue and brought those beggars who sat outside because they had a lame leg or something was wrong. They probably brought them too. The whole town gathered and healed them. Now that was a long day. I don't know how big Capernaum was at the time, but when you're talking about healing the whole town, it's going to take some time. I had a long day Friday, and I know that when I got home Friday night, all I wanted to do was sleep. And I slept hard, and I had a long night's sleep, thank you God, and got rested. However, that wasn't what happened for Jesus, was it? Early in the morning, it says, while it was still dark. In other words, indicating nobody else was up. Everything was still. People were resting. But early in the morning, Jesus got up, and he left everything to go and be with his father. That's such a beautiful picture because what do we need most after busyness? And our lives are far too busy. We need a time of quiet. We need a time with our Father so he can speak to our hearts, to our souls, to our busyness, to our lives so that they can be ordered and meaningful and in service to him. Now, that in itself is a beautiful sermon. I'm not doing that sermon this morning. However, the next thing that happens is what we're going to key in on because he's out away from everybody. And what happens? Moms, you know this. You go to the kitchen. Somebody follows you. 
You go to the basement. Somebody follows you. They hunt you down. Where's your respite? Locking the bathroom door. No. You all know that. you got to find some place you can get away. There it is. Not the favorite spot you want to be in, but everybody was looking for him. The disciples hunting him down, and they said, everybody, everyone is looking for you. Why were they looking for him? Pardon? More handouts, more healings, needy, thinking that his main purpose was to physically heal them. Sometimes we believe the same thing. That God is focused on our healing, physical healing. And Jesus, I just thought I was kind of rude with what Jesus said. Ah, let's go someplace else. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. No, he didn't say that. But he did say, let's go someplace else. Why? Not that he didn't care for the people or have compassion for the people, but he was on task. This is why I came, to go, to be on this journey, go across the countryside and teach and preach so that all would know. Everyone is looking for Jesus. Sometimes we don't know that's what we're looking for. You probably know some people who are uh, mixed up about their life, making bad choices. Maybe they're just struggling to know what step to take next. Maybe they do need physical healing. Maybe there are relational struggles. Maybe there are financial things going on that they just can't figure out what to do. And they're looking for answers. They're really looking for Jesus. They just don't know yet. As a faith community, we, we just did this. We offer up our prayers for others, for our community, for ourselves, for our world. We look to Jesus to heal us. And you heard me say this earlier in the prayer, that Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. What is he doing there? He's pleading for us. He's interceding on our behalf. He's saying, as he whispers into God's ear, she's a good girl. Give her a break. Help her out. Show her what she needs to know. He's done a great job. He's fallen, but Lord, we need to help him get up. Let's do that. These are our people. Interceding on your behalf. That's what Christ does. Everyone is looking for Jesus. We look for him as we come here to gather to worship. We look for him as Christians as we go throughout our days making decisions. Anybody here ever wish God just send me a telegraph? Send me a letter? <coughs> Write it down on the table in front of me. Just, I need help. Pardon? Two by four. Two by four? <laughs> I don't ask for that. I get it often enough. <laughs> so, that phrase just keeps sticking in my mind. That the disciples said to Jesus, everyone is looking for you. That is really where people are looking. And they don't even know it. So we, as the church, we as Christians, must believe this, that Jesus is the answer. Now, you heard the children's time this morning, and that there's often a joke among pastors that whatever the children's story is, the kids already know the answer is Jesus. So... We should know that too, right? Just as quickly as they do. 
Jesus is the answer. We really must believe that. And we must believe that everyone is looking for Christ. If we don't believe that, it works in vain. Every person is looking for the answers in their life. And those answers are found in Christ. Let me share a little story with you. This was written by um, Tim Hansel, and I, I've read a, had several different books he's written. Um, he's a great storyteller, and he tells about one day when his little son Zach and he were out climbing in, in the, some cliffs, and uh, the, Zach got ahead of him, and all of a sudden he heard him say, Catch me, Dad! Catch me, Dad! And he looked up to see Zach in midair flying toward him. And he said it began to be a little like a circus act, you know, trying to get him. He caught him, they fell to the ground and laughed, and then he said, Zach, why did you do that? Can you give me any good reason why, why you did that? Because what he did was, he jumped and then he yelled, catch me, Dad. And Zach said, because you're my dad. Complete faith and trust. Is that the kind of faith and trust we have in our Heavenly Father? That we'll take that step and we'll say, catch me, Dad. I'm stepping where I think you are. Catch me. Everyone, everyone is looking for Jesus. Everyone is looking for someone to trust like that. Everyone is looking for someone who loves them like Jesus loves us. So what are you looking to Jesus for? I want you to really take a minute. What is it that you're looking to Jesus for? Ask him right now. Jesus, help me. Lord, everyone is looking for you. They want to know your love and your assurance. They want to be forgiven and to find wholeness and newness of life. We look to you for answers, Lord. For guidance, for forgiveness, for strength. Help us to know without a doubt that you are exactly what we are looking for. And that we have hope and life in you. Lord, teach us to connect with that same yearning in other people. That they might know you and understand what is happening in their lives. Both those who know you, Lord, and those brothers and sisters who have not yet called you out of time. And we thank you for your blessings. Amen. Like the apostle, we carry our bodies in the life of Jesus, a treasure in clay jars for the life of the world. Let us offer the treasures of ourselves and our possessions for the life of the world. Yes, sir, please keep forward.
All right, all right. God, we lift to you our gifts, our sacrifices, and ourselves. Bless them for your work and your kingdom. Amen.